Mr. Howard Kramer was born May 20th, 1948 in Lemnon, Pennsylvania. He was raised in Schaeferstown, Pennsylvania. Mr. Kramer spent his time before the Army working in bridge construction in Pike County. He left at the age of 19, and prior to that, he was living life to the fullest as any 19-year-old boy would be. Mr. Kramer was drafted into the U.S. Army. He was going to enlist, but shortly after his decision was made, his draft letter arrived at home. I made up my mind that I was going to enlist because I was just, <clears throat> all my friends were in the Army. Everybody got drafted. I mean, it was only me left, and I knew that was going to happen, so I was going to come home and tell Mom and Dad that I was going to do that, but my draft letter was sitting there. He began training at Fort Benning, Georgia. It was very different to be down there because Pennsylvania was a very conservative place compared to Georgia. During his basic training, Mr. Kramer had no intentions of being a sniper. He was just following orders and planned to be a regular ground pounder. Adjusting to military life wasn't awful for Mr. Kramer, but that was because of his attitude. He saw it as, you're stuck here. You may as well make the best of it. Sitting around and being miserable wasn't going to change anything, so instead he did his best to enjoy himself. The best thing for him to do was have fun with his friends. Mr. Kramer never really got homesick because he was used to spending a lot of time away from home due to the fact that he lived away prior to the war. Mr. Kramer didn't originally plan on being a sniper, but when the opportunity came, he took it. They were looking for volunteers to go to the new sniper school for a month. The way Mr. Kramer saw it, if he was in training for a month, it was a month that he wasn't in the field. Everybody thought he was crazy, but he wanted to know what was behind door two, and he wanted to do something different. Being a sniper wasn't exactly easy, but Mr. Kramer handled it well. You couldn't just kill any person you saw. You had to pick your targets carefully. Shooting just anyone would give away your cover. Mr. Kramer said that at night, everyone was fair game. He said that when doing your job, you had to get it in your head that this is what you were trained to do and you had to do your best. One thing Mr. Kramer said he would never forget was his instructors. He says that the way they trained him was why he was able to go out and fight. When anyone asked him how he was able to do his job, he always said it was because he was trained by good instructors. Mr. Kramer served in Vietnam for roughly one year. He said that you spend 90% of your time being bored to tears and 10% getting the crap scared out of you. He lived in Navy ships and traveled rivers on boats or helicopters. They would stay out on the rivers for five or six days. Mr. Kramer didn't mind life on Navy ships. He felt the conditions were rather good. Conditions in the Delta where Mr. Kramer was were straightforward. In the wet season, it was wet and hot. In the dry season, it was dry and hot. In the Navy ships, they had air conditioning, working toilets, hot and cold showers, and real food. In Camp Dante, barracks were where you would take showers. The food was okay, and there was no air conditioning. Mr. Kramer was then moved further down the Delta to a new battalion where their bunkers were made out of creosoted railroad ties, and they ate absolutely nothing. When off duty, there were actually a lot of things to do at Camp Dante. There was a swimming pool, miniature golf, tennis courts, volleyball courts, and even movies that you could go see. Otherwise, you could just sit around and do nothing. The recreation was a good way to take your mind off of the war. Mr. Kramer made great friendships. He is still in contact with some of his instructors and friends. He has attended his partner's kids' weddings and other important events. However, not all of the friendships he made lasted because not all of his friends made it out alive. One friend that died, he can remember exactly how he found out. He was sitting around one day when someone ran in to tell him that they were bringing in his friend's body. Mr. Kramer couldn't believe it. His mind didn't quite process it. Mr. Kramer did join a veterans organization, but he doesn't bother with it much. To him, it wasn't too important to be so involved with all of that. As of lately, he has been doing more interviews, and soon he will contribute to a documentary that Penn State is conducting. When the war ended, Mr. Kramer was already back home working in bridge construction again. To watch a fall of Saigon and watch a war go on hurt veterans of Mr. Kramer personally. He has a t-shirt that says, We are winning when I left. Mr. Kramer tells us they did not lose the war. The government did. When Mr. Kramer got home, he was treated poorly at first. When he was in Seattle waiting to go back to Schaeferstown, he was treated like a lesser human being. He and other veterans were called names and spit at. These veterans had just left Vietnam, so they really didn't care about being treated poorly by people who had no significance to them. They may have been treated poorly in Seattle, but when they got back to Schaeferstown, they had no problem. Mr. Kramer's father told him that he had two weeks to feel sorry for himself, and then it was back to work, because if he thinks he's the only one that went through that, he was crazy. 
He was okay with that because he knew there was no use in feeling sorry for himself. He felt that he was lucky enough to get out alive, and it was time to move on and live his life again. Today it doesn't bother Mr. Kramer too much. He has taken the things he went through during war and used them as good life lessons. He did his best to see it as a learning opportunity rather than a tragic event that would haunt him forever. It was intriguing to hear from someone who saw war differently than most people. Oftentimes, you hear about people having lifelong emotional struggles from their wartime experiences. Mr. Kramer is very different than most people. I would like to thank him for his service to our country.